last Sunday was the feast of the Transfiguration, and I know that I was not, I did not celebrate the Eucharist with you in this parish here. I was elsewhere. But I want to begin this uh, morning with one of the practical implications from my homily last week. I remember saying that this altar is the altar of our, th this, this altar is our altar of transfiguration and that every Sunday is our transfiguration day. And I also remember saying that the Eucharist <coughs> is where Jesus and our life comes together. That this is where our life mingles with the life of God. That here is where our timeline, the timeline of our lives, merges with the timeline of Jesus. Here is where we enter into communion, God with us and we with God. And then I remember saying that after our transfiguration experience on our transfiguration Sunday, like Jesus, we go down the mountain and embrace life in its totality. So last week, I focused on time on the mountain. And this week, I would like to focus on time down in the mountain. How do God and life come together as we head back into the world? How do we bring faith and life together Monday through Friday? How do we have up-the-mountain moments on our down-the-mountain days? And that's the title of my homily up the mountain moments for our down the mountain days. So how do we do that? Folks, I have three suggestions that I'm going to make. And honestly, it's a very simple homily. These are things that you probably already know and you're already doing. But it's just good to raise these basic things up again in course of a reflection. So here are my three points for today. First of all, prayer as the intersection between life and faith. Prayer as the intersection between life and faith. So today's first reading and the gospel reading are very helpful in helping us to understand this. Elijah's encounter with God on Mount Horeb happened at a very challenging time time in his life and the life of Israel. King Ahab and his wife Jezebel had been instrumental in leading Israel away from Yahweh. And when Ezekiel opposed them, Jezebel sought to destroy Elijah. And Elijah was so dismayed that he flees and prays that God may end his life. So it was really to flee the wrath of Jezebel that he went up to Mount Horeb, which is where today our reading begins. And there, on the mountain of God, Elijah encountered God in a small whispering sound. That was his days and moments of prayer. The Gospel reading also describes a very busy day in the life of Jesus. If you read the section before the section we just read at our uh, reading today, he had ministered to a huge gathering. He had, to, he had preached to people for days. And then, after listening to Jesus, people were hungry. So he works a miracle, fed 5,000 people, and at the end of the day, he was probably exhausted. Just like Elijah, Jesus too went up the mountain to pray. 
I asked earlier, how do God and life come together when we have come down the mountain? How do we have up the mountain moments in our down the mountain days? And the answer is prayer. Prayer is the intersection between God and life. Prayer is where God and life come together. Monday through Friday, we must find ourselves often in prayer, like Elijah, like Jesus. Now, in my second and third point, I want to give some very tangible ways of making it possible for us to be in prayer. And one of the things I want to talk about is the value of sacred space. I want to propose a very practical way to create up-the-moment times on our down-the-mountain days. You see, Catholic spirituality places a very special emphasis on sacred spaces. This is because Catholic spirituality is very sacramental. We have seven sacraments, but we also have what we call sacramentals, those objects or those places that communicate grace to us in a different way than the sacraments do. We are a people who use tangible realities to be in touch with God. So besides the Bible, for example, the crucifix, the rosary, statues or pictures of favorite saints, candles, holy water, medals, even flowers come to our, to our aid in our daily lives. And a sacred space works the same way that other sacramentals do. Now in one sense, all space is sacred, isn't it? But there's something special about a sacred space that we can call our Mount Horeb or Jesus' prayer mountain. So think about your home, for example. Perhaps the family can create a sacred place called the prayer mountain. It can be as simple as you want or as elaborate as you would like. But either as a family or individually, anybody can access this sacred space to be in touch with God. This can be your Mount Horeb or your prayer mountain. This space can be your up-the-mountain space for your down-the-mountain days. This can be the space where God and life intersect this can be the space where we encounter God in the midst of a busy and constantly evolving life. And I especially want to propose this to families with young children. This is a great and tangible way to invite your children to pray, to connect with God, to create a sacred space in your home that you can call your prayer mountain. That sacred space where we can hear the whisper of God. And thirdly, I want to propose the value of silence and solitude. Besides creating and finding ourselves in a sacred space, silence and solitude is yet another need on our down-the-mountain days. Now, I find it truly fascinating that between a strong and heavy wind an earthquake and a fire, Elijah encountered God in a tiny whispering sound. Jesus too, after a very hectic day, went up by himself to pray. And Matthew tells us at the end of that, that when it was evening, he was there alone. It's a very important detail. He was there alone. I myself have been led into silence and solitude in the spirit of John of the Cross. Now, again, there are myriads of ways to pray. For some people, it is their commute to work that gives them time to pray. For other people, it's a hike or being in nature or working out or doing chores or spiritual reading that helps in prayer. All these ways to connect with God are valid and meaningful. However, 
I believe there is tremendous value in making time for silence and solitude. This kind of silence and solitude that allows us to hear the tiny whispering sound. Whereas every way and every attempt to pray is precious to God, silence and solitude allows us to enter into the depths of divine mystery and the mystery that we are, each one of us. Silence and solitude allow to find ourselves alone with God like Jesus did. Silence and solitude allow us to hear the whisper of God. Silence and solitude allow us to have deep and intense up-the-mountain moments on our down-the-mountain days. The God we encounter on this altar, the same God who encounters us the rest of the week. May our, mingle, may our lives mingle with that of God on this mountain today as we enter into communion with God, but then also down the mountain as we head back to our homes and to our world. People of God said,